level head till I'm dead. What's up, Rito? Shade Tree Surgeon here at Burt's Barracuda, and I'm pretty excited about today. Usually when I come up to Burt's Barracuda, it's because I'm looking directly at this metric section over here, because they always have a deal. There's definitely deals to be had out here today. The fact that they got a CRF 450L sitting out here. Burt's takes in trades that nobody else will. I'm not required to say that. Nobody's holding a gun to my head. It's just the truth. Look at the Harley dealerships around you, man. I love that this is in my backyard and you have stuff like that. I bet he traded it in on a Pan America. And usually, even though I'm talking about metric bikes at Burt's and the best deals we can find. Today, we're only talking about Harley Davidsons. And believe it or not, something that's even rare at a Harley Davidson dealership, most Harley Davidson dealerships, not Burt's, something that's even rarer than a metric motorcycle. And that's a vintage Harley Davidson. The fact that Burt's has that shovel head back there, that low rider shovel head sitting on the showroom floor for sale in the year 2024, you don't see that anywhere. There'll be a couple dealerships that'll have vintage bikes here and there as like, like a testament to their brand like, oh, we've got these vintage bikes, so you can see the history of it. But find me a dealership that actually puts them on the showroom floor still. Since we're talking about lowriders today, I thought it was pretty appropriate that we're not gonna have one lowrider, the original lowrider, not just two lowriders, and the second one being this lowrider S twin cam 110 with the uh, Dynabro paint job on it. Not one, not two, but three lowriders on the showroom floor. Three different generations of lowriders in the same dealership. And while it does break my heart, that we're missing an FXR lowrider, therefore not creating the quadret of lowriders. That's all right. The fact that any Harley Davidson dealership has three generations of lowriders on the floor, let alone them on the floor and for sale, is amazing. One of my favorite things about Harley Davidson and one of the things that their detractors always bring up is that they don't change their bikes a lot. Their heritage is right there for everyone to see. Call that a good thing, call that a bad thing. I personally love it. Motorcycles, it's all about the motor for me and I don't need it to be whiz bang brand new special even though that wasn't 17 M8 is pretty it's a spaceship compared to these other motorcycles. But I love that it's still just a big air cooled V twin. What's really cool about all these three motorcycles sitting here is we get to see uh, the evolution and the de-evolution of Harley-Davidson. Let's go ahead and start with the shovel. Starting with this shovel head, a bike that I am achingly familiar with because I have more experience with this motorcycle, specifically this same year, 79 shovel head low rider than any of these other bikes. I've never even owned a twin cam or a Milwaukee 8. I've ridden a 79 shovel head across the country from Portland to Tampa. A 4,400 mile round trip that ended with me having to push start it, hold it together with duct tape, bailing wire, and a piece of wood hammered into it to keep the oil inside of it. That was an adventure. And when we're talking about evolution and de-evolution, you know, this seems like it would be the de-evolution, but it isn't. The bottom end of this, the cone shovel, is the evolution bottom end. Now, you think evolution, you think Evo Motors. Yes, that's the evolution, but it all started on the bottom end of this motorcycle. Evolution bottom end, single cam. Now, between all these motorcycles, we have four camshafts, but six cylinders. That's where the de-evolution comes in, but a little bit more on that later. This is a kick-only bike, so there's never any gear guarantee that I'm going to be able to start it, but I'm going to give it the old college try. I've certainly done it enough, so if I can't start it, that's on me, baby. Every shovel head wants to run, I promise you. I'm going to make sure the gas is on. There's actually gas in it. We have gas, we have choke, we have battery, we do. I'm not going to fight it too long. <laughs> I've got other stuff to do. Oh, it had a starter at one point. Oh, it's just not working. You got a piece of metal on you? Piece of metal, piece of metal, piece of metal. What do I have here? Yeah, this thing has a starter. Better question is, will it start?
Well, a start with a shovel is never a guarantee. Give Birch just a little bit of a break, man. They just got the thing in. Moving on before I get too sweaty to the low rider with two cams. We're gonna give the shovel head another shot a little bit later. I got a couple different tricks up my sleeves, but let's get on to these guys. And this is gonna be a lot of people's favorite one out of the bunch, man. The Twinkie, the old twin cam, has got a lot of fans. And it was yet another evolution, more advanced than the engine that came before it. Twice as much, two cams this this time. We've gone from 1,340 cc's, 80 cubic inches, all the way up to 110 in this lowrider S here that somebody has freaking done up loud, baby. Listen, I got a loud mouth and I like loud motorcycles. This one really does it for me. And just because it says 110 on these heads right here, that don't mean it's a 110. The Evo and the shovel head, only difference between those was different heads. A couple other differences as well, my engineer friends will hate me, but the twin cam was a radical departure from what came before it. And as different as this is from the Evo or the cone shovel head before that, it, it's still a air-cooled V-twin. Now, if we had my favorite generation of lowrider, which of course is the FXR, we would have had the rubber-mounted lowrider before this. And of course, it was rubber-mounted in a Dyna with an Evo before this as well. But if I'm gonna pick one Evo lowrider, it's gonna be the FXR. Although looking at this thing, it's making a pretty good case to pick it right now. Let's take it for a ride. <laughs> Hey baby, I might be Evos for life. I might be shovel head till I'm dead, but something about a way a twin cam sounds. This still might be my favorite sounding Harley of all freaking time. Baby, we got the legend suspension freaking done up. Must've been a tall boy riding this. Pulling on that clutch. Something tells me he might have a little bit more than a 110 in there. That ain't no stock clutch. Judging from the Legend suspension and the paint job and every other part on this motorcycle, it does not seem like much was skimp. I'd stand to reckon it ain't stock. Uh, judging from the vibrations, he's got some money in the engine stabilizers and the rubber mounts as well. This does not vibrate like a regular Dyna, man. Again, this seems like a no expenses spared build to me. Judging from the forward controls in these bars, you're probably dealing with somebody blissful Ellie size too. I like it. This thing's got leg room, baby. Boys, I'm gonna tell you right now, <laughs> this ain't no one cent. has in it but it ain't a 110 damn if it is a 110 it's got a whole bunch of other work done to it holy moly this thing rips <laughs> this bike is bad as fuck oh, yeah. <laughs> damn yeah i like it <laughs> something tells me this probably won't be here for long i like it a lot there's still a lot of hardcore dyna bros out there and i get it the twin cam dyna this iteration of the low rider especially this one with the 110 and the dual front discs and all that this is a bad bike dude just stop now this one particularly this one's bad as hell dude don't you cannot mess with this bike i just noticed i was talking about how this does not vibrate like a regular dyna you get on a dyna they only had two rubber mounts as opposed to the fxr's three different rubber mounts and i'm like there's things you can do to fix that and fix all the handling and get rid of the death wobble it's not cheap but there are things you can do and it makes them just absolutely every bit as good as an fxr if not much better in a lot of ways and uh, that's the company to do it with i just saw a spoof sticker right here so yeah whatever all that stuff is that you got to do to make it so and make this thing handle like a razor blade this one's got it done i bet bro i get it i get it all y'all out there living the twink life 
I especially get it on this bike. <laughs> I love it when somebody goes all the way and this thing is to the hill. See a lot of Dyna bros out there, a lot of Dynas with a, a stock 88 or a stock 110 and nothing else. But when somebody goes all the way, legend suspension, whatever the hell is underneath the tank, it's something big, something dangerous. I dig it. All the spooth stabilizers, like somebody really did their research and really built this thing amazingly. Like, this is the kind of motorcycle that somebody who works on motorcycles builds. And that brings us to the Lowrider's final form. Well, it's current final form anyway. And the de-evolution of the Lowrider, which of course is a couple of things, which are our de-evolutions and aren't. We've gone from the twin cam to just a single cam down there instead of a double overhead cam or anything that's better than the twin cams of the old engine. Although arguably the single cam does a much better job, that's up to an engineer who knows a lot more than me to decide. All I know is it's got one less. We've also devolved once again from a rubber mounted engine to a solid mounted engine. Now, when we started out on the lowrider shovel head, the original lowrider, we had a solid mounted engine, of course, those old shovel heads. I can tell you from experience, run them down the highway at about 75 miles an hour and you only got four gears. Uh, let me tell you what, first off, you're hanging on for dear life. Second off, call that the Hitachi glide, all right? There's a reason that ladies love of shovel heads and it ain't the way they look and it's certainly not the way the guys who ride them look and after 4400 miles on that bike not only was that the hitachi glide but uh let me tell you what my hands felt like i was et all right phone home baby and uh tell your friends to come over too back to the future back to the past back to a rigid mounted engine while the shovel head doesn't have a counterbalance engine this does a lot could be argued to say it's a de-evolution for guys who are big fans of harleys big fans of vibrations and saying like hey man, I want my Harley to vibrate. This one doesn't, feels like a Japanese bike. Now, whether you find that an insult or not says a lot about you, but that, don't leave that up to you. It could be an insult. The funny thing about vibrations versus not vibrations versus what a Harley is supposed to feel like is back in the day when they first moved to rubber mounts on the FXR and the Tour Glide, that was an upgrade and it had a completely different style of vibrations. You could still feel the bike moving underneath you. It moved more, but vibrated less. Whereas before that, it was a sharp buzz, man. I wasn't kidding when I said Hitachi Glide. If you've never spent any time on a rigid mounted, vintage big twin let me tell you what you know what i'm talking about and if you haven't you don't so is it a de-evolution not really <laughs> it's better in every way like i said this thing's a freaking spaceship i've never ridden a 117 i'm excited to throw a leg over this thing i'm really excited to see if it's as fast as uh whatever's going on under the hood on that other low rider <laughs> I love the way Milwaukee 8 starts. It just feels like you're starting some sort of vintage aircraft with a hand crank. The way it just cranks up is so powerful. And then of course you don't get much after that because of this exhaust, but that's all right. You know, when you when you get a low rider S, the exhaust is the first thing to go. It is in, uh, immediately though. It's like, I want to just be like, oh, the Dyna's so much better my FXR, blah, blah, blah. Like this is the better bike. Like you get on it instantaneous and you're like, wow. This is a totally different motorcycle. The new Softail is a world-class bike, man. These things are freaking amazing. <laughs> and uh, this 117 might, it might be faster than whatever that, uh, whatever that Dyna's got going on. You'd have to put them neck and neck, baby. I like that. The Milwaukee 8s are just freaking undeniable. I like the way the twin cam sounds. Oh, that's always a toss up between the sound of a twin cam and the sound of an Evo or a shovel head to me. And I don't know, I do actually like the Milwaukee 8. I, I don't know, I, don't ask me which child I gotta save from the fire, man. Come on, cut me some slack. So when it comes to me, yeah, trust me, I do. I love the shake of a rubber mounted big twin. I do, I like it. But I gotta tell you, and I hope not breaking any hearts out there, it feels Japanese is not an insult in my book. That's a compliment. And this feels Japanese. It feels like an amazing motorcycle. And then people are still gonna talk crap about it because it's air-cooled. I do love that. They got it completely water-cooled. I wouldn't be into that. I'd be like, that eh, kinda lame. I know you can make more power. I know there's advantages, but the fact that it's just big honking air-cooled V-twin, but the fact that it's still like a 117 cubic inch V-twin air-cooled, and it just feels this amazing when you ride it around. It's awesome. It's great. I love it. Win. 
It's a win. It's the best bike Harley's ever built, in my opinion. Now, am I going to switch to Milwaukee 8? Well, but first off, I can't afford one. Second off, I don't know, man. I know how to tinker on Evos and shovel heads a little bit. I ain't learned anything with a Milwaukee 8 yet. So I, I usually like to stick with what I know how to fix. Although there's plenty of info out there for fixing Milwaukee 8s. You can do it yourself still. One of the amazing things about Harley Davidson's is that even their most advanced bike right here is sitting on the brand new most advanced bike you can get from them. You can still do it yourself. That's always been like a core tenant of Harley Davidson too, is being a, oh, 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 oh. Being, <laughs> where was I? <laughs> Being able to do it yourself, being able to work on them yourselves, and the joke goes, well, of course you have to work on it yourselves. You have to work on it yourselves because they're always breaking down. Jokes aside, man, the Evo shovel head, it can be just as reliable as you are at maintaining it. If you maintain your motorcycle to run forever, shovel heads want to run. I took one across the country and guess what? I had to fix it a bunch. I had to stay overnight some places to fix it. And with a lot of help from my friends, I made it cross country on a 1979 shovel head. All sorts of people used to do it back in the day. And I got across the country because you can fix it yourself. And in the year 2024, this Milwaukee 8 with the help of YouTube and the fact that it's not a super Super complicated bike. You don't need any crazy special tools or special knowledge to know how to work on it. You can still fix it yourself. You can still upgrade it yourself. You can, if you got a carport and a basic set of hand tools, you could put cams in this thing. You could put heads on it. It's not hard. And so, yeah, I called it a de-evolution, but it's, it's not. It's not a de-evolution at all. Yeah, cool goozy over there, baby. That's the Italian Harley Davidson. I always say Ducati's the Italian Harley Davidson. So, yeah, not a... Oh, that, that is definitely not a de-evolution. Hold on, baby. Woo! Oh yeah, I said de-evolution, but it's not. When you're talking about a motorcycle evolving, a brand evolving, the fact that this is still, even though it's advanced, like very advanced compared to the shovel head, the fact that it's this simple still, I love it, baby. I want to be able to work on my bike. I want to be connected to my machine. I want to know if the shit hits the fan and I can't do anything else that I got a, I got a decent shot at figuring out what's wrong with this and fixing it. I want to know that when it comes to doing the upgrades and putting my hands underneath all of its little bits that it's got hiding under there. I want to say that I made it go faster with my very own dick beaters and nobody else's. Although I usually got plenty of help. Let me tell you, you always have help building motorcycles. And if you don't have help building motorcycles, be a little more friendly with people, okay? It's a it's a great way to hang out. This thing handles amazing. It rides amazing. Yeah, this is this is an amazing bike. Now, I, I don't know. I, I'd still be tempted by that Dyna. That blow rider's louder than a half-drunk, mostly horny bridesmaid around about midnight in Ybor City. And I, I like them loud, man. Maybe. This is one hell of a bike. If you're getting a new FXLR S, you're getting the new Lowrider S, the 117, you are getting one hell of a motorcycle. That always makes me wonder what's next. Like, how could they get any better? Dude, how could they get any better? Maybe somebody thought that back in the day, dude. I wonder if one day Harley Davidson will have a motorcycle that's as far better as this bike is than the 1979 shovel head, the original lowrider. That'd be a bike I'd like to see. I don't know if we'll ever see it, Man, I'd sure like to. The cool thing about Harleys, their infinite rebuildability, and the fact that there's places like Burt's Barracuda that keep the lowrider, the original lowrider shovel head around. The fact all that means uh, not only will hopefully I one day see it, but if it does happen, I'll probably still get to see every single one of them side by side still. And I love all bikes, man. I like bike, baby. I do not discriminate. If it's got two wheels and a motor, I can find something I like about it. But that, what I just said, that's what I love about Harley Davidson. I have a question for the God. Why? All right, one last gas. If it doesn't work, that's okay. Oh yeah, well, we'll see, it might not. If it's got no spark, then it's not gonna spark. But dude, I've fucking put more miles on a shovel head than any of these other bikes. They will always run. Like I guarantee if you gave me, an, not guarantee, no, there's no guarantees, but you know, you gave me a uh, couple more tools, another hour since the park plugs, if this doesn't do it, yeah. this thing will run. They always do. Let's get our key, make sure we got everything in, cause I already ran down the battery a little bit. So, I don't know how many cranks we got left in it. All right, go on that side. How's that spray out? Give me a squirt. Yeah, okay, hit it, hit it more. Get it more. Moment of truth. One for the money, two for the show, three to get ready. <laughs> Shovelhead will always run. <laughs>
All right, one more time for the people in the back. My man Titus over here coming in clutch with the brake clean. After everything we've been through with the shovel head on the Shade Tree Surgeon channel, you think we're gonna sit here at Burt's Barracuda and not have a shovel head run? I don't fucking think so. Give another squirt. baby shovel head till i'm dead three generations of low riders from the 70s from the very first one all the way up to 2024 and guess what with a little bit of love they'll always run i love that i love finishing on the win never say die baby never give up never surrender and i'll tell you this when it comes to shovel heads i know this for a fact if you can make it make a noise you can make it move now we're not doing that today but i know that that thing will ride in my heart, baby, when it comes to shovel heads, when it comes to Harleys, if you know it in your heart, it can be so. Huge thanks to Burt's Barracuda, Burt's Black Widow for allowing me to do my thing. Not everybody wants to mess with old Shade Tree Surgeon. The fact that they allow me to come up here and do my thing and mess around with all these bikes makes me feel pretty good and lets me know there's still good people in the world or at least people who don't mind a dirty old hobo swamp wizard like myself. And it's the same kind of people that will still put a 1979 shovel head on the floor for sale. It's a Harley Davidson dealership that still does that, that still cares about the heritage, that still cares about the old bikes. You got Harley Davidson dealerships out there that won't even take in a twin cam to work on it. Let that sink in. They won't even take in a twin cam, let alone a shovel head, let alone anything else. And over here at Cuda and Black Widow in Florida, they got 79 shovel heads for sale on the floor, man. I like that. And I've seen bikes as old as pan heads for sale on the floor over here as well, man. They do them all. I wish they all took a page out of Burt's book. I wish there was more like that. And even though there isn't, I'm glad it's like that here. And let me say something about Burt right now. Burt runs a foundation. It's Burt's Salute to America Foundation. And they are running a raffle right now that I want to tell you guys about. Now, if a veteran is homeless, a lot of you guys don't know this. A lot of you guys do. But they cannot receive their VA benefits unless they have a physical address. I don't ask me how that is so. I don't know what happens and need to change it. What I do know is that there's a lot of veterans out there who are on the streets, who are suffering, who don't have what they need, even though they serve this country and they deserve their benefits. They deserve the reward for serving this country and sacrificing themselves to make this to make america what it is to protect america to let us do stuff like this to let me be a freak to a weirdo and do whatever i want and say whatever i want and be a total asshole a lot of people had to die for me to be an asshole and even though i certainly am one and i love to talk shit not a day goes by that i don't think about that and i don't appreciate that and the fact that some of them are on the street just i can't barely tell you how it makes me feel and i don't know how to fix the problem i don't know how to change the law but what i do know is that bert's doing something about it and he's running a raffle for a 2024 135 cubic inch supercharged road glide the boys over at blockhead garage are building right now they're gonna raffle that off i'll have all the info down below if you want to enter into that and 100 of that is going directly to help homeless veterans and bridge the gap so they can get them a physical address so they can start receiving the benefits that they earn the fact that bert's doing that and the fact that he's doing this and everything else i know about the man to be very happy to call him friend and, and most everyone else who's met him will tell you the same thing he's a great dude and that's gonna about do it for this video if you like any of these bikes go ahead and give the boys at bert's barracuda a call and, and make sure you tell them old shade tree surgeon sent you that doesn't do anything Thing for me but it might do something for you until next time keep it weird crashing through the sky comes a fearful cry shade tree army shade tree army armies of the night evil taking flight shade tree army shade tree army nowhere to run nowhere to hide panic spreading far and wide can the world oppose the deadliest of foes shade tree army shade tree army who will risk it all to end They never say die, walking tall with banners high. Shade Tree Army, a ruthless gang of scum, villains, freaks, and bikers determined to rule the world.